All right, thank you for staying with us. With each day, the ongoing feud between Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki and his deputy, Philip Schwaibu, deepens. It appears to be a messy situation at the Edo Governorship Office, and uh, for many Nigerians, it is threatening the delivery of uh, good governance in the state. Due to this development, the governor has even stripped the deputy governor of some of his state duties and withdrawn his media aides as well as denying him access to events. And the latest, the deputy governor was denied access into the government house. Well, joining us via Zoom from London is media consultant and member of the APC, Kasim Afegboa. Kasim, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Now, this feud uh, seemed to be taking uh, a very dramatic dimension, especially with uh, the recent video that went viral, where the deputy governor uh, was seen to be standing by the gate uh, of the government house that was locked. Even though they were said to have, uh, the governor had moved some of his aides to another office and all of that. And one is wondering what do you make of how the governor or both of them are handling this matter because dividends of democracy is what the people of Edo State are looking forward to to deliver. But then with all of these distractions, what are you reading or interpreting from what is going on? Well, thank you very much. I think there are quite a number of uh, issues that are begging for answers, questions that uh, continue to agitate our minds as uh, citizens of Edo State. I had said it in one of my appearances uh, on your TV station that what you have in Edo is a failure of governance, a failure of politics, and failure of performance. You see, where you, where you have people who are supposed to be delivering dividends of democracy, getting so... Kasim, are you there? All right, it seems we can hear you now. Are you there? Okay, you're sounding very faint. If you could speak louder, that would be fine. All right. While we wait for Kasim to get his device correctly, uh, those uh, amateur videos uh, uh, you are seeing there on the screen uh, where the deputy governor is actually making a call saying that um, he couldn't access uh, the government house because it was under lock and key. Uh, but like I mentioned earlier, there were reports that um, those who were working with him had been moved to another office. And I was wondering if he didn't get the message uh, with regards to the change of location of um, office, or he wasn't part of those that were meant to move, and he drove uh, to this point. Well, for whatever it is, uh, there are questions begging for answers, like Kasim was saying. We hear you about Kasim. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Right. I'm go, go ahead with your line of thought. You were talking about the fact yes, that... Yes. 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 In, the, in the two of them are quite busy hmm. performing and delivering democratic dividends. Right. They won't have time for all these kind of political attackations such that has undermined, you know, uh, democracy in the state. You, you, well, I think the governor, for all I care, seems to be taking the issues too far from the mundane to the ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Because whether you like it or not, the, of course, the functions of the deputy governor is captured in the Constitution, but we, we see them as appendage, app appendages to... The, the governor or governors or like the vice president to the president, but that shouldn't be if the motive or the motivation is actually for you to serve the people, deliver democratic dividends, and ensure that there is political stability in doing all of this. But uh, like I said before, I said, you know, it's law of karma. Those who, who, who beat the finger and fell them, you know, are now ripping 
in multiple folds, you know, the, the, the fall back. Both the governor, both the deputy governor, they are birds of the same feather. And uh, I'm not expecting anything different from this when it comes to uh, the, the, the governor trying to prevent the deputy from running or trying to create an unholy situation such that uh, people will say, oh, the governor is playing the victim. They play the victim and think they want people to sympathize with him. I think both of them are just, you know, men who have who share the same characteristics, who who don't care about the Edo people, who are more interested in what they get and other than serving the people. Mm. Because Edo state is in the news for the wrong reasons all the time, all the time. This is not the this is not the first time. They started quarreling with uh, members of PDP when they came in. So they quarreling with Wiki, they quarrel with an Obi, they quarrel with Oshumoli, they quarrel with almost everybody who, who who assisted them to get to position. So when they don't see anybody to quarrel with, they have to quarrel with themselves. So they are fighting themselves now, and we are watching. You know, it's quite a ridiculous uh, political drama, but it's also quite interesting because uh, uh, at this time, the people are people are busy, you know, looking for what they will, how they will make a living, you know, through their legitimate enterprises. Right. Uh, not, uh, Kasim, uh, Kasim, sorry to sorry to jump in. You know, some of the things that you said, you know, some of them are quite funny, um, laughable, and others, you know, will just take them as your, you know, personal opinion. But all the same, uh, with all of the things happening between the governor and his deputy. The Edo, Edo people want the gains of democracy, but does the governor, you know, really need to humiliate or embarrass the, the deputy governor, as some has already said, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, in driving home his point that maybe they're falling out of the same, uh, the, the same interest? You see, I was uh, yesterday. I was discussing in one platform, and, and I was making certain comments, and somebody said, "Ah." Uh, how can you, uh, seeking or aspiring to be governor of Edo State, be making those kind of comments? As, and I asked the guy, do you want me to be telling lies about scenario because I want to be a governor? I, th I, I, think, I think it is good for us to speak truth to power. Mm. The fact of the matter is that you, you use the word humiliation. I would will, I will rather want double humiliation. You see, when things are playing out, they are the concomitant effect of previous bad behavior. Bad behavior in the sense that, see, we sat down here in Nigeria, we as political watchers, as analysts, and saw that for four good years, 14 members of the House of Assembly who were validly elected by their people were prevented from being inaugurated into the State Assembly. It was it was uh, uh, supervised by the deputy governor, who branded people who were even sitting in beer parlor to go to the assembly 9 p.m. in the night, such an unholy hour, to inaugurate 10 people, you know, to preside over the collective lawmaking process of the state for four good years. And we all folded our arms and we were watching. When we complain too much, people say, oh, it's all about politics. Must politics indulge, you know, the ridiculous? Must politics in, endure the, 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 the comedy of some sort? I think what is happening now, those who were prevented from being sworn in and who were validly uh, elected by their constituents will be sitting down laughing in their little corner. Because the man who played the thing God yesterday with his principal, Obaseki, are now at each other's uh, uh, jugular. They are battling for survival. So I don't see that as humiliation. When Philip Jabu rode Okada, who seem to forget so easy, when he rode on Okada to Edo University at Iyamo to prevent Adam Soshomole from attending the convocation ceremony, we all laughed. We said, oh, it's pop pop politics. But today, you can, see the, you can see how things are playing back. So I am of the opinion that Edo people will endure the, the next one year for them to exit the corridors of power in the state. They have, they have dealt a mortal blow to the good image of the state. Look at the look at the uh, the, the Benin Kingdom. It's been presently bocanized by the government of Eto State by creating, trying to create kingdoms 
in other several local governments of the of the south, which has never happened in the history of that state, which is more or less like an abomination. But but we are just watching again, and people will be clapping hands and say, "No, he's doing the right thing." What right thing is he doing? The Benin Kingdom, he, he, as far as all of us know, at the upper of Benin, presides over the entire several local governments in the state of the of, of the south. And so now that the government has created. Uh, try to create uh, try to create uh, kingdoms in those local governments and vocalizing the Benin Kingdom is committing an act that is sacrilegious. But we are watching again when we are shouting this. Oh, I think why you talk too much, you shout too much, you complain too much, and all of that. But these are the kind of things that are taking governance away from the people because you need a stable environment, a conducive environment for you to deliver your democratic dividend. But I, like I said, we are ready to endure the next one year for them to exist. November 11, 2024, Obaseki would, 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 would sing goodbye to the people of Edo State. All but right. Whatever he has <clears throat> now, we we'll, we'll leave, we'll leave for us to describe who, who he was and who he is. But again, there are those who think that um, all of this uh, theatrics and uh, humiliation or double humiliation, like you call it, might just be making the deputy governor more popular and might be winning the sentiments <laughs> of the people. <laughs> We're popular to where? Where is it controlling? Which, which, where is it getting the popularity from? From us, Edo people? No, we are, very, we are very politically aware. We are very conscious of our environment. We know how to reward bad behavior. And uh, mm. I'm just telling you that they are only bringing out the states in a very in a wrong manner. They are putting Edo State in the news for the wrong reasons. And uh, in terms of image management, it will take us some time for us to be able to clean up the mess they are, they are creating now. If you talk to an average person, every person that they tell you, why is your state always in trouble? Why is it always in political turmoil? Since, since uh, Felicia Ebola and started, being governor and deputy governor of Edo State, it has been one trouble after another. Much ado about nothing. People just try to play, play the role of a thing god, you know, trying to think that without them, heaven will not exist. Without them, oh, we cannot even breathe. It, that shouldn't be the approach to governor because uh, political power is ephemeral, very fleeting. You wake up in the morning, one way, it's like a revolving door. They say power is a crazy aphrodisiac. It's a revolving door, one, one, one way in, another way out. By November 24, whatever happens, Obaseke and Philip Shaibu will leave the state as former governor, former deputy governor of the state, whether they like it or not. That is the tenure, the aspiration of the tenure. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about popularity, you can't be popular for the wrong reasons. If you should leave as good examples to upcoming politicians, young minds, who will see that we have done so well in representing them based on the mandate you enjoy. And so for that reason, we want to also play politics. Every people people call politicians some manners of names and all of that. It is because of behavior such as this. Mm. How could people win election validly elected by the Independent National Electoral Commission with their returning with their certificate of return and all that? And you refuse their job for because of your parochial interest it's just because you want to you want to call yourself a thing called in the state. Ten member assembly, ten member out of twenty four presided over a two for Four good years. And you want me to be copy for them because they are they are teach other truth now? No. I will urge them on. They should find themselves to the clinical fringe. So that at the end of the day, next time, other people will, will learn from that. Yeah, that, that begs the question uh, as to the governor being constitutionally elected alongside his deputy. Uh, we expect we expect that um, they would work, you know, in tandem for the good of the generality of the people of Edo State. But um, the house seems to be aloof, you know. Uh, try to, you know, watching them without taking a stance. Where is the role of the, the, the national, I mean, the House of Assembly in Edo State, the Edo State's House of Assembly in all of this, so that they can always prune the powers of the, gov uh, the, executive, uh, the executive to, you know, not to be no, acting like emperors? That, that, no, no, there, there's, there's, there is nothing that the Edo State House of Assembly can do. It's a puppeteer House of Assembly. In you your know, words. The, 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 the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you with all sense of responsibility. The speaker was handpicked and uh, quite a number of the officers there and all of that. So it's, you had the governor saying that when he wanted to pick the, the speaker that the, 
the, his deputy had uh, three members and spoke to Kasim, it seems we can't hear you anymore. Could you check your device, please? Uh, the business of lawmaking is what, you know, should bother us in terms of what kind of laws are they putting in place to add value to governance, to add value to the commonality of our collective existence as a group people? What kind of laws are they making to put pay to price of marginalization of, uh, of governance, of abandonment, and what have you? Look at the roads in Edo. Go and fix roads. He was thinking about uh, he was thinking about uh, federal government rules, but state government rules are, are, are in the state are not any better. Why? What's what's the problem? You are you are you are putting signposts at the spot of every bad road that you should think it belongs to federal government, whereas you are leaving your own that is also as bad as you can think of and uh, not at, attending to them. You are busy locking uh, the gates of the deputy governor's office, and I think that that is the problem of Edo people. No. I don't want a secure state. Insecurity in Edo is terrible, and the government takes some 850 million naira every month. That's ridiculous. And the state is so porous because it's a transit state. Almost everybody who wants to go to the north will pass through Edo state. Almost everybody who wants to go to southeast, you pass through Edo state. You want to go to south, uh, south, south, you pass through Edo state. So, because it's a transit state, the, 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 the likelihood of uh, upscale insecurity becomes so so, 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 so so instructive. So what you should do as a state government is to invest heavily in security to, to ensure that the state is secure for people who are pursuing their legitimate individual and collective interest. But this is never in their dictionary. They would rather take money, go and do other things. And be, how, how do you explain a government budgeting eight hundred and fifty million naira to uh, monthly for for security issues? And yet there's Last scale uh, uh, kidnapping in the state, bad rules everywhere, and you can't fix all these things. And you come and be telling me that it's federal government rule and what have you. The ones that the, your predecessor did for federal federal government rule, the money was refunded. 18 billion was refunded to a state. What did they do with it? So there are quite a number of issues begging for attention, but given their nature, I predicted this in 2016, even as a commissioner in the state with Obataki as economic advisor. I told the governor then, Adam Sushomoli, that this, your successor, this your choice, will haunt you, will haunt the state. It has come to pass, and they have proven me right as a prophet. You know, 2020, 20, 20, I told the PDP hierarchy, don't bring this man to this party, because if he was behaving the way he was behaving in APC, you allow him to come to the PDP, when he knows that he won't be seeking any, any election, he's going to go like a, 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 a bull in a China shop. And it is happening now. I have been proven right the second time. All those who insulted me that I campaigned for APC candidate in Edo, and even up to this morning, somebody was like, he was telling me, oh, you campaigned for this, you actually said this. It has come to pass. So you need to look at the psychoanalytical content of every individual when they are seeking a public, public office. Because they say money and power, when you give them to individuals, that's when you know their true character. And for the two citizens of Edo, first two citizens, the governor and the deputy, they have, they have performed below par, you know, in terms of uh, governance, in terms of character <clears throat> indices, in terms of attitudinal orientation. All right. Uh, well, we don't know what other drama might unfold between these two, uh, but there are those who are saying perhaps the next line of action might be the impeachment of uh, the deputy governor. Do you see that happening? Well, I, if, if it happens, I would say good luck to him. Uh, I, I, if I, if my wishes are horses, uh, I will, I will ride on the crest of ensuring that the two of them are impeached, so that we can have a breath of fresh air in a new state. Do you know how it becomes a disincentive for investment when you wake up in the morning and your investors, uh, both local and uh, International has seen that the deputy governor is being locked out of his office, and the video, the video has gone viral and all that. And yet, you say you want to attract investment. What kind of contradiction is that? You know what it means for you to be an adult person, and when you are talking to people who are enlightened, people who are who are who, who are politically conscious and aware, 
are telling you that what is this nonsense happening in your state? Do you know how, how painful it, feel, it feels for you to be from a state that is always in the news for the wrong reasons, with all the kind of skills and uh, the potentials, you know, that uh, resonate in the state all, all across the 18 local governments? Then you now sit down and begin to wonder. And Brussels University, there is a crisis there. Uh, with college of agriculture in Goraki, there is a problem. Uh, University of Water has been out of service. Uh, the University uh -huh. Yamo, you, you have a problem everywhere. So what is the problem? What's the motive? What's the motivation for governance? If not to serve the people. But serving the people must you make them to go through this kind of uh, unholy uh, scenarios. All right. That's a fine place to leave the conversation. Uh, we must thank you, media consultant and member of the APC, Kasima Figboa, for your time on the program. Thank you.